Do you ever have so much nostalgia for a particular video game that you start to overlook all the faults said game has? Kirby 64 was one of the very first video games I've ever played. I still love the game to this day. I own an American, Japanese copy, and likely at least five different copies on Virtual Console. Please don't ask me why. But a lot of people seem to not like the game as much as I do. And if you were to ask me why I liked it when I played it when I was young, I would probably mention how awesome the game looked graphically, especially for the system it was running on, and how colorful and vibrant the different areas were. I feel like if you are younger, you have more appreciation for things like video games, that you only focus on the good, never the bad. In 2015, I saw Swordsman Kirby, a Twitch streamer, do speedruns of Kirby 64, and it really grabbed my attention since I loved the game so much when I first played it. I was very into speedrunning at the time, I still am to be honest, so I decided to learn the any percent run of the game. I'm still trying to improve my time to this day, because honestly I am not happy with it. I am literally fucking stupid. But it's not a game, in my opinion, you can consistently play over and over and not get burnt out incredibly quickly. This is likely why my time isn't so great. I play for a few months, then I might come back a few months later. The game has problems, and playing it over and over again because of speedrunning really makes those problems apparent. Today, I'm going to be talking about what I feel are the biggest issues with Kirby 64, the Crystal Shards. I really do believe the reason why I enjoyed Kirby 64 so much when I was younger was because of the fact that it looked so nice and every area looked different. This is a thing I truly want to applaud the game for, because if you look at more modern Kirby games, a lot of areas are repeating and it can get bland really fast during a playthrough. However, I feel like this is the biggest positive for Kirby 64 and that's it. It seems more like eye candy than a video game to me at some points. If you want to beat the game with 100% completion, your only objective is to collect all three shards in each level, and that's it. A good portion of the game is simply running, hard to even call this running but I'll get to that later, to the next room and making sure you have your eye open for shards. Sure, you can also look for items like 1-ups and food, but game overs in this game are completely pointless so it shouldn't even matter if you die. All they do is give you a screen, open back up your file and you are right where you left off. It is the equivalent of a death with just a couple extra seconds added as a punishment. The best parts of the game in my opinion are the boss battles at the end of worlds, but those are very small sections of the game that are usually painless. If you aren't going for 100%, you aren't missing much. If you collect all the shards, you unlock a new area called Dark Star, and don't be misled, this isn't an entirely new world, it's just a single level, where you battle the real final boss, Zero Two. This boss is easier than Miracle Matter, which is supposed to be the fake final boss, and the final boss of Ripple Star. And after you defeat Zero Two, you unlock the true ending scene. Sure, there is more to earn than a lot of games after collecting everything, but shard collecting in this game can be incredibly tedious, so it's almost worth not even attempting it. Honestly, I believe it doesn't even make the game more fun, if anything, it can make things extremely frustrating because of the backtracking you need to do to actually collect them all. I will be mentioning this a lot later, but for now, moving on to the next part. Sure, this is not really a huge deal, but if you know Kirby games and have played a lot of them, you would know that these things can be very annoying. If a certain franchise is always stuck with a particular mechanic, why slightly alter it to confuse those who have played the other games? One of these weird gameplay mechanics that annoys me is the fact that you can only fly for a specific amount of time. This is not in any other Kirby game, and it is just more of an annoyance than anything else. If you want to continue flying, you either need to take damage or land to start flying again. If they thought that infinite flying would break the game, I'm not really sure why you can damage boost to continue flight, but who really knows what they were thinking. Another annoying mechanic? Unpopular opinion, I'm not really a huge fan of the power combining gimmick, and I really think it was just something they added for people to easily be able to differentiate the different Kirby games. That and it's a gimmick, so sell the game. There are no traditional Kirby powers in this game besides a few exceptions, but the exceptions all seem to work slightly differently. For example, look at Cutter. It is more of a boomerang than Cutter. It is slow, bad, I'm not really a huge fan of it. When you combine two of the same power, they all just seem to be slightly better versions of the singular power. This is kind of lame because they could have made cooler designs. For example, Double Boomerang maybe could have shot two boomerangs from front and back. This is probably a dumb idea, but I do believe it is a bit cooler than just a boomerang with a larger hitbox. Some powers are completely useless. You can argue there are useless powers in the mainline Kirby games too, just such as sleep, but these are pretty rare and sometimes creatively used as a way to troll the player and waste your time. Let's say you had a spark ability and wanted to combine it with a bomb enemy thinking it was going to be cool. Nope. Instead you get a light bulb that is only used to light up a room for a singular crystal shard in the early game. Maybe you have fire and want to combine it with ice. Yeah, that's what you get. Some of these are really cool like ice and electric. You get a refrigerator that spits out three food items that actually heal you. This is incredibly OP, and the food can actually hurt enemies too. Despite it being very odd, I love this power, but you have to keep in mind a lot are just like... <laughs> I want to save this part of the video for the end. Whenever I've seen people say something negative about Kirby 64, they usually always bring up something about the game being too slow. 
People have even made game shark codes to speed up the game for a more enjoyable experience. Kirby 64 is slow. Here is your walking speed, here is your running speed. This gets old really fast. This is such a huge problem that could have very easily been fixed. I believe the reason why this happened was because this is HAL's first attempt at a 3D slash 2.5D Kirby game and they weren't really sure how fast it should have been. I admit if you speed up Kirby speed, the animation looks a bit unnatural to be going that fast, but this issue has been fixed for sure in the modern 2.5D Kirby games. This is a huge problem with the game because of how boring it makes it feel. For a 2D platformer, the last thing anyone would want to have would be a slow moving speed. It makes it unenjoyable and lowers the difficulty a lot. If you want to move through the game fast, be sure to use double fire, which is still kind of slow, but it is better than nothing. This is the last part of the video. I want to save this for the very end because of how irritating it can be. If you are going to be completing this game fully, be prepared for some repetition and backtracking. I feel like this can hurt any game, especially Kirby 64 since it takes so long to get through certain levels because of how slow it is. Some crystal shards require certain powers to get. For example, let's take a look at the last crystal shard from the first stage of Rockstar. It is behind a brown and yellow wall, signaling you need spark and rock to break it. Guess what? Everything you need isn't in this room. If you didn't know this beforehand, you need to quit the level. Knowing you need to get that shard, you look around for a rock and spark enemy. In that same level, there's a rock enemy in the first room. If you thought Kirby's walking speed was slow, take a look at this. You need to move on to the next room, sift through the challenge as auto scroller, and hope there is a spark enemy in the next room. Yup, there is. Time to combine it. This game makes it very easy to fail your power combination because of ridiculous things like this. If you happen to make this same mistake during your playthrough, repeat exactly what you just did. See how this can be extremely irritating. Once you keep repeating things like this, it makes it very unenjoyable. This level is a great example because of the fact that there is an auto scroller thrown in there before you have a chance to even get the shard. As I mentioned, Kirby 64 is one of my favorite games, but honestly I really do believe it is a nostalgia thing. If you have a game that you really love for reasons such as nostalgia or anything that isn't the fact that the gameplay is actually good, I recommend never speedrunning it or excessively playing it, instead maybe playing it once and leaving it alone. Good night everyone.